Hello friends, welcome back to Zero TV. This is part 19 of my wooden clock build. This week we're going to put my Arduino code onto this. Let's get going. So here we are back at the electronics stage. I promised I'd be doing this. I'm going to show you what I've got going on with the, with the circuit. I've got the Arduino. This is similar to what I'm using in a clock. This is programmed with a sketch which acts as a programmer for this chip to burn a bootloader onto this chip. And this section over here actually programs this chip with the programmer want. So let's explain each bit so you know what's going on. So as I've mentioned in the previous video, these chips are actually pretty expensive. They're about 20 bucks a pop. Well these ones, these are completely blank, they're only two dollars. So I don't want to use this in my clock because I've only got a couple of these and I want to use them in other projects. So I'll make this behave like one of these. Now the attraction with these are, this has a bootloader on it, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. It also has a USB port on it so I can plug into my computer, load a program onto that, connect things to the inputs and outputs and I'm done. And that's, that's it. Whereas this... There's no ports on it whatsoever, so I've got to attach all of this stuff to make it work. I've got the same reset switch that this board uses. I've got this crystal here, which is the same one that is on the Arduino here, plus all the interconnecting wires. Now this has a bootloader on it, which means I can program it, whereas this doesn't. Now the bootloader basically means that the computer can talk to this, and this knows it's an Arduino, so I can put the code on it, and it runs it. It's like if you've got a new computer and you put Windows or Linux or Mac OS or something on it and then you put all your programs on it afterwards. You've got to do the same with this chip. But this comes with it already on, so it's, it's all in one. No faffing about. Whereas this, it's completely blank out in the factory. No bootloader, no anything. So I can't connect this to, to the computer directly and write stuff to it to get it to do what I want. I have to load the bootloader to it. Which is what this does. I've written a special programming sketch to this, so I can I can connect my computer to this, and then this connects to this. So I'm using this microcontroller to program this one. So you can program a microcontroller with serial with the USB after you put the bootloader on, but the bootloader you have to load on with SPI. So you need an SPI bus, and that's what this thing does. Once I've put a bootloader on this, I can then program it with the computer using this USB to serial bus. So USB goes in here, goes for that chip, out there, and into that. I can then program this again and again and again, using the serial connection, just as I could with this, with no problem whatsoever. Now this is all a bit confusing because I've got wires going everywhere, and this is a culmination of several hours of work trying to get the reset line and everything else working. So I'm going to break this down into two circuits because we have two distinct stages here. We've got this bit putting the bootloader on and this bit programming it when it's done. Okay, here we go. I've got it on two different circuits. It's actually the next day because I went out and bought a new breadboard so I can put everything on this. And then I have room for all the servo bits which are going to go over here. Otherwise I've just got another circuit board that's like this, another breadboard rather that's like this and there's just no room on there, you know. I bought another one of those as well anyway. Got quite a few things in fact, including an external monitor which is now over here. So I can actually frame stuff and see where I am. But I digress. This is a circuit for putting the bootloader on a blank chip, which is there. This comes out and goes in this empty space in here. And I use this to program that chip with my clock sketch. So I'll show you the process of going through that. I won't show you too much of the code because the code is a bit... Uh, it's complex. I don't fully understand it myself, but I'll show you how I'll plug it all together and everything else. Okay, so we've got this all plugged in. Got a chip ready to accept the bootloader. This is the website I'm using for the hookup guide. It's on the Arduino website. And this is the code I'm going to be using. Arduino ISP. It's a very long code, it's very complex. It's basically a protocol converter. It's converting the USB there into the 
SPI bus, which I can use to talk to the blank microcontroller. And there's all sorts of things in here like memory allocation and buffer size and everything else. First thing I'm going to do is select the correct board and everything else from the menu. So I've got the board I want is Arduino Micro and port, Arduino Micro port, program using AVR ISP Mark II and then upload. It takes a long time to compile because it's a very long sketch. And then that's flashing because it's uploading. And it's done. Fantastic. Next step is to burn the bootloader onto this using the sketch that I programmed into that. So now I select the board, which is Arduino Uno now because we're targeting this chip, not this. The programmer is Arduino as ISP on micro. And there's two different versions. There's the default version, which is which is Arduino as ISP, but it doesn't work for the micro. I've not understood why, but there was one for the micro specifically, and that one works. So if we use that, so just to clarify, I've got Arduino Uno as the board, Arduino Micro, which is this on that correct port, it's COM port six, and then. The Arduino programmer is Arduino as ISP on micro, which is this, and then burn bootloader, and it should burn the bootloader onto this chip. And it's done. Fantastic. Next step, I'm going to take this chip out. This is pretty fiddly. I'm going to put it in this. And this goes a certain way around. There's a little tiny notch which is just there and that marks the end of the chip which has pin 1 and that goes in here Ooh, and aligns with pin 5 which is there so our chip with the bootloader still blank in it, it doesn't have a program on it for running anything I'm going to plug this into HAL this flashes a few times and it means that's all working good so now this previously blank chip will behave as an Arduino Uno and we can program it again and again using this in the serial, serial port for the computer ok Let's test it. Let's put a demonstration program on this to blink this LED. If we go over to here, we've got an actual sketch called Blink, and that's like a a Hello World application, if you like. That's how we get that right. This basically turns an LED on for one second or a thousand milliseconds down there. And off again for a thousand milliseconds. So off one second, off one second, forever and ever. Let's change the board. It's still older than Uno, that's good. We can ignore this because it's now using this serial. So we can set this to whatever we want, it will just ignore it. Set COM10. Go into it again. Yep, COM10 selected. Arduino Uno, and now let's upload it. There we go. On for a second, off for a second. And just to prove to ourselves that that works, let's make it. Let's just make it on and off for one second. So half a second on, half a second off. And recompile that. There we go. So that works. We've now got our own Arduino Uno, which only cost a couple of bucks plus some parts, and we can use 
this to program another one. We can program as many of those as we want. We can even get extra fancy and use this to program a blank chip. So we can connect this up to that and then program that with a bootloader and then program that with sketches. So we could, we've got our own programmer there. So we only needed to use this once and then we're golden because now we have our own Arduino. We can make as many of those as we want. So now the next step is going to be programming our clock code with the servos first of all just to test it into this the pin configurations between our Arduino Micro which is this and the Arduino Uno which is this are different so we have to look up a map to see what pins actually go to which Arduino pins because they're not obvious so pin 13 on the Arduino isn't necessarily physical pin 13 on this, in fact pin 13 on the Arduino is this pin here on the chip which is what's making this flash on and off. So let's plug some servos into this and get something running. Hey. We're actually getting somewhere today. Oh right, this right here is all the fun. This is great, I'm having all the fun today. Okay, so I've got the bootloader and the sketch programmed onto this Tomming stuff here. I've got this which turns on when it boots up and it, when it's reset through there this doesn't do anything this LED but it will, I can make it flash on and off in the code if I want like a debugging output or anything else like that and I've got this scanning through and moving the servos still need to attach the servos and they're going to go here for the servo A and here for servo B over here I've got the battery for the real time clock the real time clock is going to go in here and I'll program that last that will be the last thing to do because the code for that works separately to the code for the servo. I need to amalgamate those together, so I've, I've sort of glommed the code together, get that working on this chip. So next step will be to put servos on these, where are we, that port and that port, and get that all moving. Hee hee hee, fun stuff. We've got the donor patient, and there's a the recipient. Let's move the wires across. Ooh. Should be server A and this one. So, oh god, here we go. Right, Ooh. Oh. beautiful, and that is all running off of that. A little chip there. So we've gone from having this one to this. So next job will be to put this into the circuit board. That's going to be next week. Because there's going to be a fair bit of soldering to do. But that works really well. It seems smoother as well, I'm not sure. I'll sort of hold it up. Hmm. Might just be the old uh, placebo effect. Make me think it's actually better. Oh, we'll see. Okay, well that works fantastically, which I'm really, really pleased about. I've got a completely standalone system. Really, this is only connected to this, so I can feed power to it. I can actually unplug all these other wires and just have power going into it, and it works. In fact, if I do... Let's try this. Transmit and receive. Use the reset pipe pin. Let's pull these out of the way. And now, it still works. So I've just got power going in, and that's it. So, next job, next week, is going to transplant in this circuit over to here. I'm going to be getting the real time clock working so that it ticks around once a minute. And I'm going to be um, adding a programming interface. So these wires I can plug in if I need to make any code changes. And I can just plug them straight into here. So if you don't want to miss that, get subscribed and hit that notification button so you know when I upload next Tuesday. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or any, any tips or anything. Thank you very much for watching. 
I'll see you next week and have a great week. Thank you.